Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and hey, I had some leftover pieces from some recent journals that I made and I thought these might make a cute little uh, sm a mini journal, something that might be cute and fun and I thought I would um, sew the spine together a little bit differently. I was just playing with this idea in my mind and um, I'll show you a prototype and then I think we're going to improve it a couple different ways and uh, go from there. So this is the prototype and um, this is the front cover. This is uh, from one of my digi kits. And what I did was I just printed out the digi kit on uh, a piece of calendar paper. So you can do fun things with it like that. And I used that picture. I put a little bit of lace here. And um, this is, I think, from a curtain. And I just sewed around the edges. And then I, I stickled it up with some copper colored stickles. And I, um, okay, so let me show it to you. So it's a very simple uh, process. I really, actually, I think I put uh, the signatures in upside down. That is so, that is so me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let me show you the center of a signature. So this is what the center of a signature looks like in this case. It's not a three hole pamphlet stitch. Um, I would say this is a uh, double, a double, double. How about that? Two holes and two holes. Um, and uh, so I'll show you what I did to make this little guy. Just an alternative of a way of making a journal. Oh, and the, the inside of this cover is um, the leftover cereal box that I had. I still had some, I was still working on my, my, my cereal box, so uh, it became the cover. Okay, so, um, all right, what I did was I took one, two, three of these uh, cut off pieces that I had. Um, from a recent uh, journal making session and let me these are pretty much pretty much the same height so I think we're okay I'm not going to have to do too much trimming uh, I did bring in um, the big gun of the uh, crocodile 2 big bite to punch the holes uh, but you can punch the holes with what uh, you have a pokey tool or, or an awl or an ice pick and what I'm going to do well, let's just see if we can figure out yeah, that's upside down. Okay, good catch, Pam. You got it this time. Let's see if we can keep it straight now. Um, these little bits are here because they, uh, these are cut off pieces. Um, that one doesn't matter. Okay, and this one. What are you doing to my shoe? I don't have gum on my shoe. <laughs> he likes to chew on the bottom of my shoes for some reason. All right, let me just get those little pieces out. Yeah, oh, what's the way is that one? Okay, we are good. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to, let's mark the top with a paper clip so we can remember what side up is. It's always nice to know what side up is. Up and front. Okay. So let's just go ahead and mark these. Actually, I should open them up to mark them in the middle. Okay, that's going to be my front. That's going to be my front. And that's going to be my front. Okay. And these, I hope you're having a fun-filled day. I hope the papers are uh, bringing you lots of uh, joy and fun. And, and uh, let's make a little journal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is bring these together in a little clump so that all the spines are uh, near the one end. And then I'm just gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna make some marks where I'm gonna put some holes and I want them to be in the same place on each little piece. So I'm just gonna, let's see, we'll do from here. It'll be one, two, and three, four. Okay, whoop, make sure I get the last one there. Okay, so now I've got my marks and I'll just grab these one at a time, turn them over Come in with Mr. Big Guns here, Crocodile. And I'm looking from the side. Um, there's the puncher. Uh, that's the one I want. I want the middle one. It's the 1 8th. And oh, I need my glasses, definitely. Today is a glasses day. Um, all right. There we go. Are we recording? Yes. Okay. One. And you want to go right on your uh, pencil dot. Gosh, these are so skinny. I could probably do them all together, but well, just for safety's sake, we'll do them uh, separately. Make sure they all come out the way they're supposed to. And all right, there we go. 
And we're motoring along here. Yes. There we go, number two. Okay, that's the... That was the front. That was the front. Okay, so that's okay. Just keeping my front straight. I'm telling you, that's probably one of the biggest things in uh, junk journal making is keeping the, which is the front facing you because um, if, you, if you go off on a tangent and that's where everything goes uh, awry. <laughs> so uh, let's see if we can keep it all together. Okay, there we go. We have our holes. And now, um, okay, so here's, I sewed this one with, um, embroidery floss but I am okay so I was using this this is a little slippery and I would not recommend using this for that because it, it came undone on me a couple times so go for something with a little bit more tooth to it let's say if you do have um, waxed linen thread that's great or you just have a um, a thread or a string that has a little more tooth to it than um, uh, embroidery floss there we go thank you all right, so now the stitch is very easy. You come from the outside, you just go out and in. Out, okay, so we're on the outside. Remember, this is the, the front. This is what we're looking at, okay. So you open it up and you just go in. I guess I go in and out, okay. In and out, try not to drop your needle. And I'm using a big uh, yarn needle and you don't need a lot. And just snip it and then tie it. And I would recommend the world famous right over left, left over right knot so that you get a nice locking knot. And um, you want to, this is kind of hard to keep snug, but if you can keep it snug, it's going to be to your advantage. So maybe use an extra finger or you got a friend around that you can ha hold it. That would be great. And uh, there you go. All right. So that's one. And these don't need to be very long. Um, okay in and out okay i really don't think it matters what uh place you put the the knot on it could be probably a crafter's choice okay i think i went the same way that's probably my downfall okay undo that go the opposite way left over right right over left okay just do it opposite it'll be better 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 christmas sweater I know, I know. Christmas is coming. Okay, so we're gonna do that two more times. And we just need, let's just cut a couple of these up. So we would need one, uh, two, uh, three, and four. Okay. And here we go. So we're going in and out. There we go. Sew her up or, or tie her up. Okie dokie, nice and snug. Little snipperoo. Okay. And this next one, I think I will just, I'll put the pause on because I think you kind of, you get this process. So you just go in and out and then tie it off. And I will go do the third one. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. I just want to say a quick hello. <laughs> okay, Fluffer Pants is on the premises and he is exploring the craft room with fine vigor. He's all over the place. And uh, I got number three done. Okay, so I'm just going to trim number three. Yeah, no, he's trying to get in my, uh, my markers drawer. Hey, you, you, psst. Oh, oh, crafting with a pup. Nothing like it. Yep. Yep. All right, you little stinker bottom. <laughs> okay. So we're putting, remember our paper clip tells us what is front. Okay. So we have these three. And now we just want something to put them in. Now this one, I took a piece of, um, cereal box uh, chipboard and I just cut out a long piece and I laid what I did I'll tell you what I did pretend this is just a piece of uh, cereal box I laid it down 
okay? And I left a little space at the top and a little space on the side. And then I took a pencil and I made a mark right where the edge of the spine was. And then I took it and I lifted it up flat across the spine and I laid it over this way. And then I made a little mark where the spine was. And then, I guess I would have been better if I showed you, right? But um, I ran out of cereal box. <laughs> okay, so then I took um, uh, my bone folder and the ruler and uh, where those lines are, um, measured it like I didn't measure it um, I avoided measuring it and I just made some grid marks here so that I could delineate where the spine would be for this little this little journal and I went like that and then that be, those lines became the spine now this is the inside of a of a book and um, I think I'm just going to use this because it's already here and we'll just carry on from this point but what I want to do is show you the next step here because this is really um, all there is to it. There's not much else to it other than this as far as uh, getting these together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, but with the magic of string, okay, I'm going to cut off two pieces. Probably don't need them that, you don't need them that long. It's just so that you have something to hold them with. And um, you can put them on a needle if it works better for you, but you could probably wiggle them through on their own. But what I did was I just took, I sewed them together. And uh, so I just went under one and then under the second one, and then under the third one, and pulled it through, and then I tied them all to, whoops, I missed the last one. Oh, this came undone, look at that. Ah, ah, I'm in the land of slippery thread. I need something that grabs. Oh my goodness, hold on. All right, we're gonna do that one over. Oh, I hope they don't all come apart. Now I'm worried. Okay, let me give them a good yank. Are you gonna come apart? Don't come apart. Yeah, they're coming apart. Okay, let me go re-sew these with, uh, I think this is crochet thread. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I want you to see what I'm doing here. And here is uh, hopefully an improvement on the last prototype <laughs> and the uh, waxed linen thread, which didn't hold very well. Um, maybe I didn't lock the uh, threads the way I was supposed to. That happens, that happens. Okay, so now this one, I have a plan B. This crochet thread, I'm going in and out, and I'm going to cut this off, okay, okay, don't need that much, but, um, all right, and this time, I am going to do, there, one, two, and then I'm going to do the never fail one for good measure. Yeah, I think that's what was missing, my one for good measure. And just try and do it the opposite way you did the last one, if you can't remember how you did the first one, because that happens sometimes. And um, then I just test to make sure that's not going to come undone. No, that's not coming undone. And no, that's not coming undone. Okay, I think we're golden. I think we're golden. So just give me a second, and I will go ahead and uh, get these three all done like that. Hold on. Okay, I have just completed number three. There is number three. Here is number two. And here is number one. So let's hope, let's cross our fingers and hold our breath. Now, um, you can line the inside of your work if you choose. Um, it's not mandatory, but I think this has a nice finish to it already. So I think I'm gonna stick with uh, the color of this because remember this first page, I don't know if you remember, but this first page is actually going to be glued down to the inside and uh, uh, the back page is going to be glued down to the back. Now, what I want to make sure is that my signatures are not too long for this project. So let me just do a little test -a here. Are we all in? Oh, we are, we are actually all in. So that is okay. Nobody's got over... Well, there's a little overhang. That's okay. Um, that's okay, though, because uh, I think we'll put a little glue on the very back, too, just to be absolutely sure. But it's not necessary. But first of all, we need to connect to these... And let's hope, let's hope this goes well <laughs> as the crafter, the nervous crafter holds her breath. Okay, alrighty. And I think what I might do with this one is, I don't know, I'm just getting the feeling like I should double it up. Something saying, double it up, sister, just double it up. Okay, so I'm doubling it up, giving myself an extra, extra little strength there. I don't need very much. Okay, so what I'm doing is, where's the fronts? Okay, these are all different. Oh, I took that one off. That, that was brilliant. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Let's see where we are. I think that's the right way. Yeah. 
Okay, that's the right way, that's the right way, that's the right way. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Now I'm going to sew them together by this very not so fancy maneuver um, called sewing them together. So under first one, under second one, under third one, make sure you catch them. And then I would wreck, whoop, no string. <laughs> You know, it's one of those days. We're having one of those days, are we? Are we thou? Yes, we are, apparently. Okay, we're going at this again. Okay, am I recording? Probably not. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, right, Sunny? Oh, you're asleep now. Okay. All right. Yeah. And we go again. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so we pull that through. And now we tie the, that together. And we're going to tie this a bunch of times to make sure that it actually works. Okay. I don't, I can never remember which way I did it when I just did it. So I tried to do it the weird way. Is that like maybe this way? Okay. That feels weird now. Now the weird way feels normal and the normal way feels weird. I better put on another one just in case. Yeah. No, no. Okay. There. Ah, yeah. All right. Um, okay. So let us give that a little tuggy pull and just to make sure. Yeah. It's very sturdy. Okay. Whew. All right. Life's looking good. We're looking good. Just to drop the excess. And we're going to do the same thing. Here's that little mystery piece of thread that I had so at the ready that wasn't at the ready. It vamoosed on me. Okay. Now we're going to go again. Same thing. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. And now you've probably come across or may have heard of Coptic stitch, kettle stitch, other fancy stitches of unknown names. This is no particular stitch. This is nothing. Nobody's ever heard of it. I'm sure somebody's heard of this, but um, this is, or else it's been invented by somebody else already when I'm, I'm not claiming I invented this. This just seems logical to me to kind of, it's only three signatures for goodness sake. I mean, if I had a whole bunch of signatures, I would probably do, I probably wouldn't do a Coptic stitch or a kettle stitch, but um, I would probably recommend one of those if you're going to have this kind of uh, attachment because uh, it'll be too much strain if you have a lot of signatures. But if you only have a few, let's do a few more of these just in case. And then one more for good measure. Okay, there we go. Good. Good. One more for good measure. I've got like five on here now. All right, there. All right. Yay, we are together. Now, technically, oh, let's give it the test. All right, here we go. Hold your breath. Okay, we're good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So technically, this is already a little book. I mean, depending on what you put, you could actually put something on the cover of this to thicken it up and leave an open spine on the back. If you if you like that look, you could totally do that. Um, but I think for this particular project, we're going to glue down the back and the front and maybe put just a little glue on the spine itself. Although you don't really have to because they are <laughs> hopefully attached together. And, but it, you've probably seen in books where there's a free floating text block in the center. This is kind of that concept in a weird warped sort of way. Yes. Okay. So let us probably need to cut this to the right length first. All right. So let's figure out where we want this to lay in our book. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So I'm having like maybe a quarter inch of, of cover here and maybe a quarter inch there. Put this on the craft mat to square it up. So even a, a crafter like me can cut a straight line using this fancy uh, tool. And then I'll slide that under. No, can't see what I'm doing then. Okay. We're just going to go a little bit longer than that, which is about there. Yeah. Is that about there? I don't know. I can't see what I'm doing. It's okay. There you go there. That's a little bit longer. Craft knife. Okay. Now this is kind of weird because it doesn't really hit the ground. You know what I should do? Instead of me trying to cut way off in the bushes here, I should draw the line and then cut on the line. That's probably a better, that's a better way to do it. Yeah. Because I think it'll bow otherwise and then it won't be a straight line. I rarely get a straight line. Um, no matter what I'm doing here, but okay, here we go. Craft knife cutting. I have my ruler upside down. Should have probably turned it the other way. Yep. See, I slipped. I should have had it the other way. It's just one of those days. What can I tell you? Okay. Put the ruler the right way. Okay. Cork side down. We have cork side down. All right. Good luck, thumb. I wish you <laughs> many years of attachment. Always retract craft knife so you don't have to fret about finger lossage. Okay. 
Now, see, I, I, I told you how important it is to put the front thing on. And do I have it? No, it's not there. Okay, now it is. Okay, that just makes me feel better. All right, so everybody's in there. And we have a little bit of extra on the top and the bottom, and that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove. Let's remember what top is. I know, I know. Okay. And, uh, okay, my flower is like the sun. Okay, coming from that angle. Um, and let's put... I'm going to use a little fabric fix on the spine. You don't really have to do this part, but I just think it's a little not bad. It's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then finger smoosh. Okay. All right. And then we put this down. Like I said, you could put the knots on the, you want to kind of see that you're equidistant from the north and the south pole, north pole, south pole of the spine. Okay, and that makes no sense, but um, we're going to carry on. That's right, and uh, I need to, at some point, glue this down. So I definitely want to glue the edges. That's probably most important. You want to glue your edges. Okay, well, let's get this guy down, get them all straightened out. Everything's good. Okay, now let's close that up. Okay. So that should be good. Let's see how it did it come out right or is it all over the place? Oh, it's not bad. Okay, that's the second page. Don't worry. Okay, so it's a little cockeyed. And with this, I can I can rearrange it a little bit because it's uh, still a little um, movable underneath with this uh, Scotch Create glue stick. You get like a second or two to reposition. So I think that's pretty good. And let's go to the back and we will glue on the back. All right, whoopsie. And you can use the fabric fix here too, but this is a light journal. It's not a, a huge heavy journal, so it might be okay just as is. There we go. All right, I think that that's pretty good. That's not bad uh, for a shot in the dark. There we go. Okay, so what do we have? We have that. We have this. Oh, we're a little low there. Okay, we'll reposition. Now there is some loosage in the middle because of... Um, because there is some free floatingness of this. Okay, a little bit. And but the nice thing about it when you do have everything uh, sewn to get this middle one doesn't really stick, but it is secured by the uh, the sewing. So um, so um, it should stay together in theory. Now, one day we will explore the Coptic stitch. One day we will explore the kettle stitch. But guess what? It's not today. Today we're doing the double double. Yes. And we got ourselves a little book. Isn't that cute? Um, what can we do with the cover? All sorts of things. Let's see. Um, how about, how's about ya? I've got some pretty pink paper over here. Maybe I'll we'll put some of this on it. What are you doing? The perennials are kind of pretty, but let's see. Now, I could cover it over, but I think I'm just going to go to the exact side. I'm going to actually use the cover as a template. That's what I'm going to do. Mwahaha. Let's see how this works out. This is creating on the fly. <clears throat> Let's pick a better paper. Okay, this one might be a little better, a little more intact. Yeah. So, oops, nope. Okay, now I'm tearing apart the paper. Not intact any. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay. And we're back. And we have a piece of somewhat um, half mutilated but totally perfect paper. What we're going to do is we're going to put this down and put that to the edge. Put that to the edge. And I think we'll just glue this one. Now you can you can sew these, which is fine. Um, but if you just want to do the glue, first of all, you need to know the size. So let's just use this as a template. It is its own template. OK, that's pretty good. And then we will just cut this off. <clears throat> Whoops. Yep, definitely one of those days. That's okay. We're muddling on through. We're carrying on. We're gonna craft. We're gonna craft, and we're gonna we're gonna have fun. Um, you know, when things don't go as planned, they're opportunities. Look at that. I, I probably need a sharper knife. Okay, now now we're cutting. Okay lesson there. Make sure you use a sharp knife. Okay. All right. Let's hope this works. Now, what I'm guessing is if I use paper to do this, 
right at the spine, it's going to break because it doesn't have enough flex in the spine. But I think that's going to be okay because we'll, get, we'll cover the spine with something. So that'll give it some extra reinforcement. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Um, this is where material comes in handy. And let's see. So yeah, you can pretty much use all pieces and parts of a book to make another book, <laughs> basically. Um, okay, let's see how this goes. Okay. All right, I'm trying to line this up. Oh boy, hope it works, hope it works. Hope I didn't cut shy. Did I cut shy? Nope, I think we're okay. All right, there we go. There. Push it down. There. There we go. Okay, so now let's try and flex it. See what's going to happen here. It's going to be interesting. There's our spine, and it'll probably tear. It might pull a little bit because it might be still damp. Let's see what happens. Now this one, um, I used a very coffee dyed paper that was brittle, and it did rip, but I covered it, I reinforced it with the material, and everything is good. This one, you know, the paper was a little bit damp, so it may be able to be trained to accommodate this particular um, uh, spine. But if you're unsure and you just don't know and you don't know what to do about it, you can always come along and just put something on the spine and that will help reinforce the spine uh, to keep it a little bit stronger. So since I have this here, maybe we'll just use this because it's, it's here. Yeah. How about that? All right. Let's just guess where we're supposed to cut here. I'm never quite sure when I'm doing this. Okay. And this is going to give us a little bit of reinforcement. And I think we're going to have to bring out the big gun of the Fabrifix glue. And if you haven't seen that, I'll show you what it is in its regular bottle. I put it in this icing piping bottle by Sugar Bells just so it gives a finer stream. Um, I can control the glue a little bit better, but it's a very good uh, clear silicone glue. Fabric, fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper, in case anybody's curious. Oh, just got glue on my hand. That's what it looks like. Fabby fix. No, there's an R there. I just, I can't get it out of its little cubby at the moment. <laughs> I'm a one, I'm a one-handed crafter at the moment. I need, I need my hand to, uh, to do this part. Okay, let's see how this works. And you could use ribbon or seam binding or, well, you know, whatever floats your fancy. Okay, let's see. There. Are we on? Okay. There we go. Okay, okay. Oh, these cute little flowers. They're very really pretty, actually. Um, okay, so we have that little flower on there. And, and if you have one of these guys who's like thinking he knows which way to, the direction of the sun is moving, but you don't really want him to do that, you just glue him down. That's what you do. You just don't know. I, I, I am a glue master, and I have my, my glue, and you will sit down. <laughs> I hope. Okay, there we go. And let's flip it over. All right, let's see what this guy's doing on the back. We'll glue you down a little bit more. Okay, and these, these, these have little rhinestones in the center, and I think I, they're all in okay positions, we believe, we believe. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get you down. Don't be letting go on me now. Oh, yep, definitely one of those days. Mm-hmm, yep. Somebody must be in retrograde or something, you know? You know? <laughs> That's okay. We carry on and we say to ourselves, it's only paper. Yeah, well, it's a little bit of fabric here, but you know what we're talking about. Okay, so there we go. We got one little uppity. We'll just put you down. Okay, and we can tack those down more as we go. That gets a little stickier as it dries, so not a problem there. And I think I'd like to ink it up a little bit around the edges. Let me see if I can just grab something quickly. Maybe the Distress Oxide, because it's here, and that was the first one I came across. Let's find the brown nubber. Here it is. Brown dauber. Well loved, well used. Poor little brown dauber. Okay, going for the Distress Oxide. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm, maybe we want to round our corners or something, huh? All right, well, let's just see. Let's just see. And now, really, we're just at the fun part of decorating. Decorating this little guy, but I'm going to show you the inside so you can get a good feel for how it operates and see if this is a, a road you want to go down with the double double. Okay. Yeah, there we go. The back we open, we have this Let me show you. Yeah. 
Okay, see there's that second one is floating because it's only attached by the strings. If you tied them tighter, it'd probably be more snug, but uh, I didn't. Okay, so, but the, they, they are well anchored. It's not going anywhere. It has a little bit of random motion in here, but I think it's gonna stay. So that is an option. Let me get a, um, oh, hang on. Okay, this is from Tea Time. It's one of my vintage Digi kits, and I think I will, uh, I feel like I want to round the corners. I don't know, there's a, a corner rounding feeling going on. And here it comes. Corners are being rounded with a crocodile corner chomper. There we go, there we go. Rounding, rounding, not necessary. And if you have a nickel or a dime or a quarter or the t cap of something, you can just use that instead. All right, that's cute. All right, let's ink you up just a little bit. Make it look like you've been around the block a little bit. And put you on there. I think that's gonna go well. Let's see if we can get the Fabrifix. Oh, we're rolling now. The Fabrifix is all friendly and flowing. Yay, yay. The tides are turning. The tides are turning. Okay, here we go. And we're down. And maybe we'll put a word stamp on there. Um. Oh, really? Where'd it go? Huh. Okay, that's gone. <laughs> I had one. Okay, tides have turned back. Apparently, I had a word stamp for the word journal, and uh, uh, it's now gone. Um, that's okay. That's okay. No, it's fine. Um, how about this? How about, uh, how about, here we go. Dream. There's a nice word. Okay. Maybe let's, uh, do we want to put it in black? I mean, this is just the fun part. We're goofing around. We're just, we're just hanging out and crafting together at this point. Okay, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little over here. There. Okay. And there we go. So very easy, very quick. I mean, um, and if you do have leftover little pieces from a big journal making, maybe you've got something like these leftover, you can turn these into the signatures of mini journals and that's kind of fun. So I hope you had fun. I hope you um, enjoyed this little uh, crafty time together. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Um, I am now in search of the prototype, cannot find it. Where'd you go? Here you are. All right, so here's a couple of examples. Whoops. <laughs> A couple of examples and uh, there you go so have an awesome day everybody if you're looking for any of my links um, they're listed down below I'll try and put links to the things that I use during this video as well as um, there's links to my Etsy shop which houses my um, ephemera collections if you're looking for a, um, old papers interesting papers to uh, uh, be mailed to you and um, you can make junk journals galore with them. They're a lot of fun to explore if you haven't had an opportunity to come across those or find those or, or something like that. My newsletter it, link is down there. It's a free monthly emailed newsletter. If you're interested in signing up for that, you get all sorts of things with that. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, uh, 7 a.m. Eastern time. And my podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have an Amazon shop where I put all my favorite tools and supplies if you're interested in looking at all the different things that I use. And I have a Facebook group. Come on out and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there we're doing weekly and monthly challenges and um, doing things from our videos uh, as prompts a lot of a lot of uh, inspiration can be found there I hope you come on over and check it out link is down below and remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon and we will see you next time take care everyone have an awesome day bye bye